ladies and gentlemen, we just finished reacting to this video talking about Dandaran episode 7 and the beauty in it. And as I was about to upload the video, I found a comment that could have not come at a perfect time. Mr. Gabriel Freezes with a capital G says, You all cried just for this? I'm just confused about where the acrobatic woman child was taken and what happened to her. And it's as if they forgot about the child. Well, Gabriel, what do you think happened? These are debt collectors, most likely the Yakuza. If the mom was unable to make payments that they resorted to taking the child, can you guess? There's a lot of different things that could happen. I think I mentioned organ harvesting. Some other people are saying trafficking. Like, come on. Come on, bro. We also don't know what the woman's problem was with them. <sighs> so, <laughs> I think that people, like the thing about Don the Don episode seven and the flashback scene, right? Is that this was a series of show don't tell, meaning simply through the animation, right? The first thing that we see, what happens, right? We see uh, the mom just in this room, right? She's alone in the bed. There's money on the table. Then you hear water, shower happening in the background. You can already assume, oh, she must be an escort and she's working for something else, right? This is called show, don't tell. Later on, you get to see moments of the child dancing, the mom wishing, you know, walking back home and then sees a dress in the window. And she looks at it because she's saving money for the kid to buy the dress because even though she can't, you know, give this kid the best life possible, she wants to at least do something for her, right? All of these things are elements called show don't tell where rather than the show spoon feeding you the information and saying, oh, look, the mom's working extra night jobs. Look, at this point, you're supposed to feel sad. You're supposed to feel these ways. If you're not able to understand through just seeing the show, then you're going to end up having conclusions like this. Of course, our biological, biological child is not Ida. Yes. They expect me to cry over this? My brother in Christ. The whole meaning of why Ida showed up at the end, right? And how, what this means for Akrasilki is that she has passed by that point. And I'm not sure if people understood the meaning of the dance scene here as she jumps off, right? She jumps off the building and basically ends her life. But rather than passing away, you know, resting in peace, she sees Ida on the streets. And what happens? Children are able to see the supernatural. And then the mother becomes obsessed with Ida, deluding herself and thinking, that's my daughter. And then later on, it's supposed to be this beautiful redemption for Ida as well, because Ida grew up this way most likely due to, you know how she's always like, oh, uh, I'm so beautiful, I'm so pretty, I'm the luckiest person, everyone should worship me. I think there was something that was fundamentally wrong in her head when the dad was acting tough and saying, mom's dead, get over it, we gotta go on, right? I'm sure the dad has his own reasons for doing that, but what does that really do to a child if you're not able to emotionally process stuff like that? By having this backstory, Ida is then having her own closure. She understands exactly everything that happens. Gives the closure to Acro Silky for the daughter that, you know, that was gone, but also Ida gets closure for herself, for the mother that she never had. And that is the whole point and the fact that you say this and i wonder if in the future they will be the real and you never know right this part i'm totally fine with theory crafting you never know if the kid comes back some way or another way but comments like this truly just highlights the ignorance of the average monkey thinking that they are so confident in their media comprehension yet you comment stuff like that Come on, bro. You're telling me that you didn't understand the whole aspect of show, don't tell. And come on, like, at least, listen, I'm not trying to bully this guy. I'm not going to ban him. It's just, I read the comments and I was like, this is crazy that you are so, like, confident about this show being mid and, oh my God, you expect me to cry for this. But you didn't even understand the show. 
That's why you're not able to be emotionally engaged and understand. And let's read some of the comments, bro. Because, oh man, I got cooked. Hey, by the way, shout out to GOT Games. I see you, my man. Hearts, hearts, hearts. I, I, I also have noticed that you've been a new anime fan for the last, like, decade. But hey, it is what it is, right? I appreciate the support, guys. Before, you think I'm going to cry over children's cartoons? <laughs> After. <laughs> It wasn't even like after the show. It, it, it was like, when did I say this? It was like as soon as the flashback happened. As soon as I heard the piano, right? And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, no, bro. After viewing such a heartbreaking scene, the audacity to hit the turbo baba is crazy. That is crazy. It, it, it felt... I'm sure it was just a coincidence, right? Because obviously it's the same ending playing every time. But I feel like for an episode like that, you should just not have an ending. Just have credit rolls rolling down, right? I agree. I told my mother, next week's episode of Dan Dan, Dan is going to have people crying. And she said, why? <laughs> because that kid could get his balls back? <laughs> Based mother understands the Dan Dan, Dan plot. Yup. Bro, I'd cry if I couldn't get my balls back. True. Actually kind of true. The mom is very based there. I'm glad there's finally a reactor who realizes the mother unalive herself. Is this true? Wait. People didn't understand. Like, hold up. I don't want to call other reaction channels out. But like, have you guys seen other reactions and they didn't understand the meaning of the dance? Maybe it's because, um... I pause and I'm also engaging with you guys in chat, right? That obviously it's easier for me to understand what's happening, but damn. People really missed that, huh? Mommy, thank you for all that you do. It's so hard. Absolutely. Her life with her child flashes before her eyes, before you hear the impact. That's right. The neck cracking. But the ground is so cinematically heartbreaking. Yup. That first person POV captures so much. Exactly right. That first person POV of running down the street, just like panting, panting, bro. And then that callback, hinting at it in the intro section. And then having it happen after, it's like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. And the kid probably got her over his heart, guess did. The emotional whiplash of that after the tragic back through is killing me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think that um, it, it's, it's an outlandish comment. For sure, but in my head, I was trying to reason of like, what are they going to take this kid, bro? They're probably going to do something horrible. Kaka challenged Dan Dan at the beginning of the video, and in the end, he met the match. You're right, John Cena. I said it. I said it myself. I said, you think I'm going to cry for a children's cartoon, bro? Absolute cinema. Go to mom. Peak reaction. Thank you. No plan survives the first contact with the enemy, exemplified as an enemy reaction. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I'm not crying. Okay, bro. Bro ate his words up from the beginning. It's the onions of the curry. Yo, it's the onions, bro. The, 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 someone's cutting the onions. Seeing Kaka lost too in this not to cry battle makes me feel a little better for crying hard. Seeing the backstory of Silky Man, heart broke on an anime character. Why, man? It's so hard to not cry. Poor mother. Something about, like, single mothers trying their best to take care of their kids and then having this shit happen is like, oh, it's just, it's like a dagger to my heart. This episode caught me off guard. It was so tragic, but the way it was presented was so beautiful. Yeah. Like, horrific acts happening, but it, there is, like, a beauty in this tragedy that was really well uh, portrayed. This episode had me crying hard. The author is just masterful at conveying emotions. I love how they put so much emotion in this episode, specifically Akrosuka's backstory. When I was reading the manga, I was like, just an old sad backstory. Yeah, I thought that too. I thought that it was going to be like an average backstory, but like, no. Nah. When it got animated, it hit me so hard, left in tears. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is what I'm saying back here. In this video reaction, I basically said, um, the way that um, Sai and Saru and the elite roster of directors animation directors and all these different you know um uh people from behind behind the scenes coming together to animate this episode they made the manga panels the source material just like enhance it's not just taking the manga panels and just fucking drawing it and coloring it and dragging shit around like a blue log but rather just 
having so much more nuance and storytelling through its animation with show don't tell that like enhances the experience compared to the source material. And yeah, the people who took away Soka's child are not debt collectors. They are a member of, oh Jesus. Last time, Kaka crying ReZero. Today, Kaka crying dan dan dan. Absolutely peak, go to reaction. Also, there is a coincidence. For whatever reason, episode seven seems to kill me every time. ReZero episode seven is also what did me dirty. For those who are not aware, in the manga panel, it's shown clearly the mother committed, you know, suicide. She danced on a rooftop before jumping to her death, compared here in the anime, which makes sense for them to not show since that was more brutal. Next episode. Are we in Scotland? <laughs> what? Uh, I feel like this is like subtle spoilers of source material, you know, enjoyers that's hinting at the next arc. What the fuck is Scotland? The mom dancing on the water rooftop was anime only, but it's so telling because it's like... There was her swan song, and she literally leaves in the roof and slowly falls at the end. That's right, with that crunch. This is a masterclass artistry and storytelling. Then virtually no words spoken for a good few minutes, but so much detail and emotion was conveyed. Dandadan Excel excels at show, don't tell. Exactly. This part, right? The other comment, they didn't understand what's going on. And they're like, you expect me to cry for this? It's because that's a skill issue. Right? You don't understand the story that's being presented through cinematics rather than just, in summary, this is why this is. Oh, I feel this way right now. Oh, this is happening. No. That's like really, really disrespectful and underestimating the consumer's intelligence. I really enjoy it when you have shows like this that at least set some standard of you gotta try. It's not rocket science. It's not like you need to be a genius to understand it. If you just watch the show and try to really pay attention, anyone I think could make the connections of what the story is trying to tell us through simply show, don't tell. Using environmental storytelling as well as character acting expression to convey a beautifully awful image. Episode of the year? That's, a cra that's not that crazy thing to say, honestly. By this point, I think Don Don episode 7 definitely can contend for episode of the year. But then again, of course, these kind of contests, it's just a popularity contest. Who am I or who are you to, you know, say this is the best episode, you know, this is the best episode. I think that um, it's an amazing episode, but like, don't get butthurt if you say, if you're like, no, it's not. These other shows get deserves better. This is all just subjective opinions. Maybe the spirit of the onion curry was floating around in your eyes. Yes, sir. Kaka fighting really not too hard not to feel human emotion over moving drawings. That's right. <laughs> it's just JPEGs moving, bro. Bro, I was literally you. I tried fucking so hard to hold it in all throughout the seven minutes. I just couldn't. With the fact we knew it was coming, so masterfully directed, Kenshi Ushi was OST. Yes. The piano soundtrack. Crazy. I'm glad to have witnessed this. You think... <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm gonna cry over children's cartoons? The title. Grown man cries over children's cartoons. <laughs> and listen, there is definitely, um, like, do you think what I said in the intro section is me, like, having, like, a declaration that I won't cry? Like, it's all, like, an act, you know? Like, I was already told that this shit's gonna just hit you in the feels, and I'm like, okay, maybe I could cry. So if I kind of go in in the intro, acting all tough and big, right? Then when I actually do break down, the breakdown will be even more of an enhanced experience due to what I said in the beginning, right? So like, listen, th th this is like, <laughs> this isn't you guys like getting me, okay? I'm setting myself up to be broken down for the content to be even more exaggerated. ReZero Season 1 Episode 7, yeah. Episode 7s, man. It just, it just kills me. <laughs> yeah, that, that too. Composer. Is Dandadan a children's cartoon? It's not. Even that aspect of me calling it a children's cartoon. It's the same thing of how people say anime is a Chinese cartoon. What a ridiculous statement. It's Japanese, right? The, the whole children's cartoon thing, it's all just dumb YouTube clickable titles, right? 
me downplaying Dandadan like that is obviously going to elicit more of a, an emotional reaction for people to click onto the video and wanting me to kind of like, you know, to actually cry. I thought this anime was all about balls. <laughs> now I'm crying. <laughs> That's the thing, bro. That is actually the reason why I think a lot of people were just like hit out of nowhere because of the expectations you had this first show. Right? We, we were just fucking... Dude, like, 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 the whole show was just weenies, bananas, balls, ha <laughs> funny. And I'm like, all right, fuck it, we having fun, bro. And then episode seven drops, and I'm like, holy shit. Because, again, of how you were anchored based on what the first six episodes has shown you, and then the whiplash you get in episode seven, bro, they got us fucking good. They conditioned us for this shit. You know what's messed up? They aired this episode on the 14th of November on Children's Day. <laughs> this some Fate Zero shit airing, you know, Kiritsugu's episode on Mother's Day. This some Mushoku Tensei shit airing Paul's episode on, you know, <laughs> Father's Day. And now we got a Children's Day. Amazing, guys. Yo, where's the grandparents? Yo, is there a Grandma's Day? Grandparents' Day? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yes. Nah, hunting. Uh, this is the Demon Slayer stuff. Listen, the Demon Slayer comparison, you're not supposed to take it seriously. It's me simply telling you the storytelling structure of bad guy. You beat the bad guy. Bad guy backstory. Now you feel bad for the bad guy. That's that's it. I'm not comparing Don the Don and saying the writing is the same. Bro went from laughing Moya into <laughs> laughing Moya fire yap into smile. Uh oh. Oh no. And crying. Oto was playing the piano. Oh. Isekai Shikaku reference. Ooh, we got a loyal community member, bro. That's, that's, a, that's a seasonal anime from a while back. What a phenomenal episode. Contender for the best episode of the week. Yeah. I mean, fuck. I, I say put that shit in the year. Like, Reezer episode 7, right? The most recent uh, speech episode. It was phenomenal. But I feel like... um. Dandanan, it's because I cried. It's, it's the, the emotional illicit. It's not fair. Subaru's speech was great. The episode was great. But it can't reach the peak what Dandanan did for a couple reasons. And I think the two main reasons, again, is the whole, like, some people did cry for Subaru's speech, but those were ha happy tears of joy. This is, like, tragic tears of beauty that somehow the catharsis from that is way more significant than Tears of Joy. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my opinion. And the other half is due to the nature of Dandadan being a season one show, which is a shonen show, which is so wide appealing to everybody. And not only that, anyone can just watch this episode standalone and they would cry probably. I don't think you really need to watch the past six episodes to appreciate the Akrosilki backstory. Anyone could watch that clip and I think they would break down. ReZero is in its third season. It's a niche genre of isekai. In its third season, you've already filtered out so many people by being so niche, and then you're also in multiple seasons deep. You can see how a greater audience is going to be able to enjoy Dandadan than ReZero simply because of this format. Doesn't mean that ReZero episode was bad, though. It was great. I love how this anime suddenly makes us sad for all those action and comedy. Yup, they conditioned us. Damn that episode 7. Yes, sir. I thought Momo was actually Akrosoki's daughter. Oh, some misconceptions. Nekubaba getting it. Dude. Nekubaba is actually ruining it. No, I think uh, ReZero is mainstream relative to other isekai, but I'm telling you the point is, you compare something like Dandadan to ReZero, I think Dandadan appeals way more. There's like the whole nature of like shonen audiences. I, I think that like ReZero is very big, but Dandadan, I think, Simply, the target audience, it's, w it's way more, like, uh, vast compared to ReZero. Nekubaba did fucking ruin the moments multiple times. Bro was breaking down before the actual stuff, uh, stuff happened. Listen, it's the piano. It's the piano, bro. Not gonna blame him, though, because I was crying ugly as well. I just remember your face when you watched Nanami. <laughs> A little bit of spoilers for an anime that I don't want to mention right now, but yes, I, I did cry there, too. There's, um, couple... So, I've cried for ReZero, I've cried for Oshinoko, 
I've cried for Jujutsu Kaisen and I've cried for Dan Dan Dan. I think those four animes are what I've cried for. Oh, also on the old channel, Arcane Season 1 Episode 3. Vi and Jinx, that ending. Oof. Other than that, I can't really remember when I have really cried. Mother's Rosario? Oh, right, right. right. Okay, that's not fair, though. Okay, Mother's Rosario is not fair. You put a girl... You, you give a girl super AIDS and you give me that... No. No. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Charlotte? Oh, shit. There was Charlotte, too. Poo. There was Charlotte. No, the tears for Charlotte, I don't think we're really breaking down, though. You know? Charlotte, I don't think I cried the same way. Charlotte was like, eyes are getting watery, right? Am I crazy? I feel like I didn't break down. You know it's sad when even Kaka -Ka cried. You see that? When you're always emotionally breaking down and crying, it doesn't hit the same. But when you have a Sigma lone lion, <laughs> a little bit of reference from Beyblade Metal Saga from a character named Kyoya. When you have a Sigma lone lion like me that <laughs> doesn't usually cry, that breaks down, I think the emotional reaction is much more significant because of who I usually am. I can assure you, every arc is this good, and there's even sad facts. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> For me, the money she pulls from the envelope to buy the dress wasn't what she saved up, but was likely her stealing from the Yakuza cut. Um, you could assume that. You could also assume that the money that she was saving, uh, she, you know, actually pay for the dress rather than paying off the debt and that's why it happened but uh, there's a lot of different interpretation of this here right i think i remember someone saying something about flashback takes seven minutes which is how long a human brain remains active after it died or something like that that's a crazy level of detail i won't cry over children's cartoon <laughs> starting to cry at the first scenes when you saw the money on the table and the piano in the curry yes you know why and i think that this shows signals that I'm, like, at, at the very least, slightly above average intelligence, okay? Because I was able to immediately understand the meaning of the money on the table, the piano soundtrack, right? I was already, like, seeing 10 st steps ahead. Maybe I'm just fucking glazing myself for no reason, but I truly believe that me being able to understand these themes immediately before anything even happened proves that... I'm not breaking down because I'm a pussy, but rather, oh shit, I can already see this happening. This is going to get bad. This episode literally made me not able to sleep for a while. It was so sad, I don't cry, but I can feel sad and depressed during sad drama scenes. Dub piano for making us realize the onions be cutting, yep. Heard it's the same music composer for Dangerous in My Heart. Oh, Dangerous in My Heart being, you know, called out. Sorry, referenced. I swear, guys, it's the music. <laughs> the piano was so good. You should know a few of the chapter names if you don't get to see her. Acrobatic Silky is kind of long. Let's just call her Acro Silky and Acro Silky and after that, the title of this episode. Okay. Eggs? Yeah, it's not. All right, whatever. This episode made a lot of grown men cry, including me. I'm crying because the anime and laughing because the reaction. <laughs> That's the interesting thing about my content. Where I'm always trying to make a joke. Even an insensitive moment. Even when I'm crying, I'll say some fucking outlandish shit. And I think that, like, may piss a lot of people off. But at the same time, it's a very unique reaction where... Where the fuck are you going to have a person trying to make you laugh during these sad moments? You know? It's like, I'm breaking down and crying, but you guys are kind of, like, laughing. It's, I hope it's entertaining at the very least. Granny got a full mouth for real, Lamau. I'd like to believe that she said all that shit to push Ira to reach out to Akrosoki. <laughs> Nekubaba, really? Maybe, maybe. So I already watched the episode. I'm not going to go through that again, but I still want to support you in the video. So comment for algorithm. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now you've gotten a small taste of kind of emotional gut punches Don Don can smack you with. This series ain't playing around and will leave you numb at times. Yeah, I see it. I'm kind of like scared for what's going to happen in the future. It will show you the horror of humanity and leaving you questioning why humans even exist, but also show you how beautifully simple we are. And that a small act of kindness can change everything. Strap the fuck in because you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> Dun -dun -dun is a train heading straight to Everest. So hope you patched a parka. It's called at the peak. 
Holy shit, that was poetic. His face going red. I know the thump really gets you with the feels. Perfection. I think the implication was the dad owed the Yakuza debts. Maybe, yeah. So I, I, I thought that the dad just knocked Akrosoki up and left. And the mom is just trying to be a single mom. And skip down. Uh, so she was uh, being forced to pay it off by working at night. She skipped out for her daughter's birthday. And as well as more tragic history. Yeah, I, Again, just a bunch of different interpretations. Who knows who's right? Unless you're the source. You know, if you're the author, you don't know. $10 for eggs? Someone lives in a rich neighborhood? No, it's, it's, it's just Canada. It's Canada with bullshit prices. They're not really $10. If you go find the most expensive organic fucking eggs, then yeah, it's going to be $10. Obviously, it's an exaggerated joke. My headcanon of Ida still alive and still getting eaten by best mom is because of Okarin's balls, which is full of vitality. <laughs> okay, sure, bro. You got me crying too. I'm laughing and crying watching this. Yes. And that is my goal, actually. Right? My goal isn't for you guys to sob with me, but like for you to like laugh and cry. Right? Like, like I'm saying some crazy shit while breaking down and I'm sobbing, but like hopefully that kind of like makes the experience less heavy and serious so that you can enjoy. All of these different moments still laugh across. This is the best, saddest episode so far. By the way, as explained by Gran yourself, Yokai attacks humans for life force and has nothing to do with SA victims or whatever. Granny was attacking Momo just as much as she was attacking Serp uh, Serpoyans, sure. A more logical headcanon is that in a movie, you're calling someone and they get attacked by a ghost, sure. Uh, I think this has to do with Turbo Ball lore. Welcome to Down the Down Depression. Oh, the other guy's Yokai backstory? Oh, yeah. We're, we're talking about that, right? Like. Because like there's four characters, I think, that's main in the opening, right? We already had Ida's backstory. Well, it's not Ida's backstory, but it's Ida's arc and we have a backstory. I'm sure the guy is also going to be super fucked up. I think she was a ballerina, but got pregnant and had to quit her dreams to raise her daughter. Yeah, something like that. Dan Dan doesn't mess around. Yes, the genre is comedy, but I can't get the comedy in this episode. Dan Dan got me. I didn't see it coming. Last week, they make us laugh. This week, I can't stop crying. And that's the whole beauty of... Why does Shonen Show, which was all just conditioning us to laugh at balls jokes, weenie jokes, right? Stupid, cringe, you know, uh, corny jokes. You get conditioned to thinking this is that kind of show. And then when the heavy hitting elements hit, it'll be more dramatic than any actual drama show you've seen. I've noticed this in shows. And I think people make the comparison in Gintama, even though I haven't seen it, where the nature of the slice of life and nonchalant moments makes the serious arcs hit way harder, right? It's all about the contrast. If it's always dramatic and heavy, then it's not really going to be dramatic and heavy when you keep watching the same shit over and over again. But if you've been conditioned to laugh and just think that this is just like a stupid, you know, bullshit, dumb show, we're just laughing, and then this happens, you're going to just, just, it's just going to hit so much differently. Yes, onions. I feel like I'm watching Clanat or something. I thought I'm watching a fun and crazy show in rom come to have a good time. Yup, I'm telling you, man, this shit got us. I'm not a psychopath. Really, I'm not. I had not thinking evil thoughts during those scenes. Look, I have a couple of tears starting to flow. Uh. Uh. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> and mid amid getting better. Low effort rage bait. This episode alone made my perception of this anime from overrated to underrated. Hey, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Let him rest in peace. That's right, them. Piano killed me. Episode 7 does kill me. Nah, this is just too peak. What the hell? If you look at this reaction of yours from the beginning, I can now say you have joined us. Just to give my opinion, her last ballet dance was no longer alive. It was a symbolic dance in which her soul left her body and lost her memory, but emotional wounds... Uh... Again, it's, it, again, it, it, it's, it's his opinion, right? Not saying this is a it's our head caddy. You guys can argue there all you want. You guys can argue there all you want. And uh, children's cartoon brother. The very first episode had attempted essay on a child. How are you child still trying to feign ignorance? The bait worked though. Yeah, obviously. Come on. You're, you're not actually thinking that Dan Dan's an actual children's cartoon. We have this comment that we, you know, started the thread with. Better in the tears. We got a we got a D1 instigator here. 
Seriously, it's very sad, but nobody wants to know what happened to Dakar Silky's daughter. And I'm just hoping that they're resting in peace. And that's pretty much it. Dandaran's killing it. Yo, the viewership's going crazy, man. Doing better than ReZero. 28 new subs from this shit. You see this? This is what happens when you have an episode where you cry. I think the most, like, the most um, popular reactions that people want to see, more so than super hype moments where you're just, like, screaming, it's the crying moments. People love crying reactions. They fucking live for it, bro. It's also very nice that, like, this is not too heavy, not subscribed to sub ratio. If you've been watching the performance reviews, you'd know that. Although this is, you know, more definitely 60-40 not subbed, the fact that we're able to get this kind of numbers and have these kind of new subs with a split that's not even like 75, 25, or 80, 20 of not sub to subs shows that like the community is very strong and y'all are returning to watch it and that's it gonna be for me. Bye-bye, see you next time.